it may be a code, but it sure isn't secret. In fact, that four like letter number code that you see next to those like pictures of proteins, basically this is the PDB accession code and it allows you to access the structure. So like that whole like atomic model as well as the map behind the model. And so what you're seeing when you see those pretty pictures is basically the scientists going in and making a model, modeling in the position of all the different atoms in that protein or in that complex, the DNA, whatever it is, and they're doing that based on fitting it to a map, which is generated from the actual data that they collect with methods like X-ray crystallography and cryo-EM. So they get this sausage thing that looks like, um, or that's called the map. It's going to be different types of map for different experiments. Um, but basically, it's a sausage looking thing. And then their job is to actually go in there and model in the atomic positions into that sausage map. And some places of the map are more sausage -y. They have, like... A, um, those regions have lower local, local resolution, um, and then some of them are regions are more crisp. And so if it's crisper, it's easier to like fit in the model. Bottom line, the model is going to be like better and more supported by the data in some places than in others. And if you really care about a region of a protein, you don't want to just look at that model. You want to look at the maps behind the model. And so today I want to show you how you can look at both the model and the maps in Pymol, which is a software that you can use to view these structures. Um, you have to go through a couple extra steps in order to actually view the maps. So I just wanted to give a quick demo of how you can do that. Um, and why you should do that, I have more on that in other posts about how it's important to not just look at the global um, statistics and things like this, which you can find on the PDB, the protein beta database. Um, you can find all like these global statistics about how well overall the model fits, but you really want to then go in and visualize the model, um, the map and the model together. And so we're going to do it in Pymol right now. Now, you might come across the PDB code in several ways. So one is in a paper. And so if you see a paper at the at the end, if they use structures at the end, they'll have the accession codes. And here you can actually just click directly to get to these accession codes. Um, and then it will take you to the entry for that. And so in this case, this is this 2B3P, which is this GFP, this fluorescent protein um, that I've been using for, for an example. Um, and so you could also find it directly in the PDB if you go in and you were to search 2B3P, or you could come across it if you were to search for GFP, which is how I found it in the beginning. Um, and so basically, you can then see basically a bunch of different structures, and then you can go check them out. But anyway, you can download directly the, so you can see there's like overall global data here. So they actually have an option. If you go to 3D view, you can actually view the structure here and you can even view that map if you do density and then you can like enable the map here. Um, and then if you go, you can then focus in on a certain region and it'll show the map and you can contour it and everything. But it's, this is good if you just want like a quick look. But you really, if you're going to be viewing these structures, you're going to want to learn something like Pymol. An alternative is Chimera X. But we're going to go ahead and fetch this into Pymol. So you go ahead and you open up your Pymol. And so you can get a free version of this, which can do almost everything the paid version can do. If you're at some sort of research institution or school, you might have access to the paid version. What you can do is we're going to fetch in the, the, the map and the model. And so if you have already downloaded them, you can download them from the PDB and from the like electron density server or whatever, basically the databases that hold this data. You can download those files directly. You're going to see something like an MSIF or a CCP4 or something like that. That's actually going to have the map information. Um, and the PDB file, which is just going to have the, the model. But we can get them both, and we can get them both either by fetching them from the command line, or we can get them through the GUI, the graphical user interface. And in these cases, we're getting them, although we didn't already have the files on our computer. If we had the files on our computer, we would use load um, in the command line and file open in the brow in the GUI. Um, but we're going, we don't have them yet, and so we're going to get them. So we're going to go to file and get PDB. Now we have um, 2B3P, that was the code that we had just found. Um, and so right now by default, it's going to give us that PDB structure, which again is just going to be that model. And we want to see the model and the map. 
And you can see that there were actually two different maps we can download. So this is 2FOC map, which is the main map you typically see, as well as this FOFC map, which is a difference map. Um, this is technically a difference map too, but this one is typically what we call the difference map. Basically what these maps are, this is going to show you that electron density and the FO is going to be the observed and the FC is the calculated. So what you do in crystallography is you basically take that map that you get and you have to, your initial map is going to be kind of rough because it's not directly from that raw data. It's like a kind of, it has, you have to process that data and you get this initial model. And there are parts of it that you have to kind of guess. And so we're going to be refining the map, the model and the map and things like this when we're actually making the structures. But right now, this is we're talking about the final structure that they deposited. And so the FO is the observed signal. So this is what they saw in their process map. And then the FC is their calculated signal, which says, if my model was exactly right, this is the, the, what the map should look like. And then the 2FO minus FC is basically subtracting that calculated map from the observed one and only leaving signal if there should be, um, if there was actually stuff there. And so you should see continuous electron density. It might be cleaner in some regions. And if there's regions that are really floppy and stuff, you might not see any map mesh, um, but this is where you're going to see with the main map. The FOFC, this is saying, show me where my map and my model conflict. And so it's saying subtract the calculated from the observed in order to point out regions where there's something in my model that's not accounted for in the map, or there's something in the map that I haven't accounted for in the model, and much more on this in other posts. But bottom line is you can download both of these here. You can also specify things like the chain name. If there's, say, multiple proteins in there and you only want a single one, you could select that. And things like the assembly, like maybe there's this protein acts as a dimer, and so the authors have made an assembly where it actually has the dimer form. But anyway, what you're going to do is you can now don't download these. And now you're going to see the structure. Um, and if you don't see the maps yet, in order to actually see the maps, we're going to have to go to action and mesh and set the mesh. And then we're actually going to get this separate thing. And we're going to show, I'll show you later how we can actually then modify the level still. Don't worry, you can go to action level um, and we can view, we can slab in and things like this. Um, and we're going to change it from this cartoon mode into a stick mode so we can better visualize things and how well the density fits. Because right now when you have a cartoon, it's basically just kind of blending everything together so you can't tell if it actually fits. But first we're going to load it from the, um, we're going to fetch it from the command line. So if I go over here, basically this is A, action, S, show, H, high, L, label, and C, color. And so there's going to be different options for these different things. And I'll show you a couple things we can do in these later. But right now, I'm going to go to action, and I'm just going to delete everything. And now we're going to do it this way. So we're going to go to fetch, 2, B, 3, P. And this is going to give me that model. And now to get the maps, what I can do is if you arrow up, you'll get the command you just wrote. So I can go to fetch. 2P, 2B, 3P, and then I press type equals 2FO, FC. And now you'll see that it loaded this. Again, it's not showing it because I haven't actually made that mesh, told it to make the mesh yet, but you have it over here. And then we'll add it when we want. And then if I want to also, so now I scroll up and I'm going to do just the FO, FC, and I fetch that. So before I show them what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of clean this up a bit and change it to stick mode. So you see all of these various like little stars, basically those is like the water and the stuff. So what you can do is you can just type remove solvent. Oops. Or you could have gone to here, you go to hide, um, and then you could do hide um, waters there and that would have done it as well. We still have these other things hanging out. So if we go to sequence, we can basically, this S down here is sequence, or you could go to display and sequence. Um, and you can also set the sequence mode if you want to see like the three letter codes, if you're not familiar, you're not comfortable enough yet with using these like one letter codes for the amino acids, um, but you can see it up here. So you can see there's, um, we have these other things here. This is like, um, basically, I think this is like cadmium and basically there's different components of the buffer that we can kind of gain the way. So I'm just going to remove it the lazy way where it basically just 
shift and you select and shift. Um, now what you see is I generated this selection over here, this celly. And if I just go over here and I action remove atoms, this is going to delete those. If I just delete the selection, it's basically just going to not highlight them anymore. So I'm going to delete that. So now we have things look cleaner. And now we're going to hide the cartoon and show the um, show the sticks. And so what we're going to do is we go to hide, hide the cartoon and show as licorice sticks. There we go. This is going to be easier to see things. We're also going to change the coloring. So if I go to C, I can color. You go to spectrum. I'm going to color by B factor. So B factor is a measure of like the flexibility and things like this, basically how, and it'll tell you kind of how confident we are about that region, the model in that region. Because regions that are really flexible and dynamic and things, they're going to have a high fat B factor, so we'll be colored red. And the map, as we'll see, is going to be really fuzzy in those areas, or we might even not see it at all. You also see that these areas tend to be like on the outside of the protein and in loops and things like this. Okay, so now we're going to actually show those maps. So we'll start with that main map, the 2FOFC, and we're going to go to action and we're going to do mesh. We're, you can set the mesh to different levels. This level is going to be the sigma level. Basically, with the sigma level, you're saying how much of, like, how much of the map to show. So you're not going to be changing the actual data, but you're changing how much of it is shown. The sigma is referring to like the standard deviations above kind of like the noise. And so the higher the sigma, the stricter you are about what you're showing. And so you're saying only show me the data that we're really sure about. So if we go to an area like over here, first of all, it can be kind of hard to see when there's so much stuff. So we're going to want to slab. You can do that by like scrolling on your keyboard or your um or your mouse, or you can go to display. You can go to like clip and make different size slabs. And you can play around and things like this. So you can see that in some of these regions, um, like these regions with the better with the better B factors, you're going to be able to see things more clearly. And over here, you're not going to be able to see things that well in these regions where we have a really high B factor, you see this missing um, parts. But this isn't too bad because what we're showing is we're actually showing one sigma. If we get stricter, say we go to action and we go to level and we go to a sigma of five, well, now we don't even see anything over here. <laughs> if we go to a level of three, Okay, now we're seeing things. We see more in this um, in this area, which has a high, a lower B factor, but barely anything where there's a high B factor. Um, and so basically, the more, the higher the sigma, the less you're going to see, and you'll see less um, and less when there's regions with the B B factor. It's going to be really hard to see anything. Um, and so we're just going to set set this action at a level of one. Okay. Now let's see what we see with this FOFC map. So again, we need to actually generate that map. So we'll go to mesh. Here we're going to do plus and minus three. Basically with the plus and minus three, we cast that plus and that minus because we're doing FO minus FC. So before we didn't have a way to get negative, but now we have a way to get negative. So we have FO minus FC. So basically, if your calculated says there's something there, but your observed doesn't agree, you're going to get a negative. Um, and so this is going to be red. And so this red would say, yeah, you don't really have evidence for the great, that grade of evidence for this part. And if there's a region in the map that um, is observed but not calculated, you're going to have positive electron. You're going to have green. And so that's going to say that you, you need to model something in here, although a lot of it's probably just going to be noise and things like your solvent, um, things that you don't want to actually model in or it would bias your model in other ways because you don't want to just be building into noise. And basically, you're going to have to have equal amounts of the red and the green. But there are some regions that really do have um, things where they sh there's missing and there's not things. And so when people they're building these models, they're using these kinds of maps in order to try to figure out whether or not they've modeled things correctly. And then you can go in there and try to see, okay, well, do you agree with them or would you do things differently? Um, that sort of thing. And we're seeing this, if we want to see it without this mesh on here, what we can do is we can um, basically turn off that 2FOFC. And now you're only seeing regions where there are those differences. 
And so then this might make it eat, point out regions where, oh, maybe this was modeled in the wrong um, direction or things like this. And so there's a lot that you can do um, and that you can look at. And then you can show or hide these basically just by clicking on them. Um, and then you could color them if we wanted to color the map. Um, say we want to color this to FOC. If we wanted to go to greens or blues, we could do blue. Um, you could also display, you can change the background color. If you want to actually like just take, take a picture of it, you can go to draw ray um, and you can draw it or you can ray it. So ray it's going to make you like a nice high quality image. And this is also going to give you the option of having a transparent background or you can draw it and it's just going to make like a, I think it's like a JPEG or something just like without an alpha channel. So it's no transparent background and a kind of rougher look. It's then going to give you the option to save it or to copy it to your clipboard. So hope that helped you understand how to view these maps and interpret these maps. So basically remember you can fetch PDB if you do type equals to FOFC or FO minus FOFC, you can get those maps. You can also get them if you go to file, get PDB. And then once you've downloaded them, you have to actually action, show the mesh. And so you can then change the level of the mesh. You can change the um, how much of it that you're displaying. You can um, do zooms and clips and things like this to make it easier to weed through all of this. And there's a bunch of things that you can do with like um, your keyboard, your mouse as well. So hope that helped you and happy exploring.